Oh, sorry. My name is Luisa Benedetto. I'm a board member of City Island Rising. Again, thank you for being here um, about to hear about this important topic. With us, we have John Doyle, who's the president of City Island Rising, and Beverly Jones, our secretary. Thank you for being here and for um, supporting this event. Um, before I hand it over to Matthew Pitt, who's from the New York City Campaign Finance Board, and he'll give us so much more information about ranked choice voting. Um, I just want to say I feel that this is such an important topic that we're hosting an info session about right now, because this will be the first time the city is using ranked choice voting. I'm not sure if anyone was on here was on the general board, I mean, general meeting last week, but a couple of weeks ago was the first ranked choice voting election. It didn't go exactly where we could see how it works. Um, but we have another one coming up next week. And I apologize, Matthew, if I'm taking away from your presentation. But this is as you know, um, knowledgeable voters going to the voter booth. Um, this is good information for us to have. So we can properly vote and exercise our democratic values. So I want to transfer this over to Matthew Pitt who thank you for agreeing to do this. I know it's a small group, but I feel like that gives us a real ability to have a, a better conversation, if you will, and ask more questions. So I'm really excited to learn more. And again, thank you for being here. Thank you, Louisa. So if you want, Matthew, you could get started. Let's go into the presentation. Why not? OK. All right, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Matthew Pitt with the New York City Campaign Finance Board. And I'm just going to go over a few basics behind ranked choice voting. And sorry, just give me a sec. There we go. Um, basically, I'm just going to go over what ranked choice voting is. Uh, how does it work and what the next steps will be. So what is ranked choice voting? Well, ranked choice voting is a new way for voters to elect their representatives, just as simple as that. Um, rank, uh, voters in this system here in New York City, at least, can rank up to five candidates in order of preference instead of just choosing the one candidate. Uh, as you can see with the example here at the side of your screen, um, and in this system, uh, voters have more say in who wins, it increases civility, and it can lead to more diverse candidates winning elections. Now, ranked choice voting is used in a number of, distant, a number of different um, jurisdictions throughout the United States. Um, Maine and Alaska are currently two states that use it statewide. I believe Alaska should be using it later on this year. Uh, in addition to that, 17 other cities throughout the United States also use ranked choice voting. Most of them are out in the Midwest or the West Coast. Um, and just uh, a few cities such as San Francisco, Minneapolis, and Santa Fe utilizes the system. Um, in addition to that, the, uh, the Academy Awards also uses ranked choice voting as well when they're um, determining who should uh, win an award. Now, how did we get ranked choice voting? Um, the 2019 Charter Revision Commission um, uh, considered the matter throughout 2019. And as a result of their consideration, they voted to create ballot question number one. And that question um, was to establish ranked choice voting in primary and special elections for local office, which will be effective January 1st of this year. Now, when we say special and primary elections for city offices, these are the city offices that we're referring to. Mayor, public advocate, controller, borough president, and city council. Um, where you will not see ranked choice voting will be uh, in a general election. Uh, you will not see it for federal or state elections, such as president, congressional, or um, gubernatorial elections. And certain local races will not see ranked choice voting, such as district attorney and judicial elections. Now, prior to 
as you all may already know, we used uh, single choice plural plurality elections. Um, in that system, voters only chose one candidate for each office and the candidate with the highest number of votes always won. Um, and as you guys also already know, the winner in that system didn't always receive a majority of the vote. However, voters can still expect to see single choice elections for federal, state, and other local offices that I mentioned prior before. Um, in addition to that, we also had runoff elections. Um, remember, if no candidate received more than 40% of a total primary election vote for any citywide office, a runoff election took place. However, with ranked choice voting, all runoff elections are now eliminated. So how does ranked choice voting work? Um, just put it um, very clearly, um, as you can see from the example here, uh, you'll have five choices that you can, five columns rather, that you can mark your choices with. Um, so you will pick your first choice candidate, completely fill in the oval next to their name under the first column, do it again for the second column, then for the third, fourth, and fifth. Remember, you can only rank up to five candidates. However, if you don't want to do that, you, you don't have to. You can just choose one candidate if you'd like. Uh, and here's an example of a uh, ballot from the 24th special, sorry, Council District 24 special election. Um, you'll see that there, are, you know, this year's standard ballot that um, the Board of Elections will be pro uh, providing at the um, election site, at the poll site. Um, and this ballot shows English, Spanish, um, and Bengali. However, just remember that languages uh, vary by election district and assembly district. So for this particular election district, um, voters here spoke mostly Bengali. So as you can see, here's a Bengali translation for both the name and the party line, as well as um, the translations for how many options you have here at the top. Now, there are some potential ballot marking errors that can be made. Um, one is giving multiple candidates the same rank. Um, we advise voters to look very carefully before they fill in the oval. And in addition to that, another um, potential ballot marking error will be ranking a candidate more than once. Um, now, here I'm just going to go over the tabulation for all of your votes. So, when they start counting the votes, all of the first choice votes are counted first. Obviously, they're the first choice. Uh, if a candidate receives more than 50% of first choice votes, they win the election, as you can see here in this example. Um, however, in some cases, you'll see that no candidate could potentially get 50% uh, in the first round or the first choice. So what will happen then is we'll have to continue counting the other choices and that will continue in rounds as I wanna go over right now. So in each round, the candidate with the fewest votes is eliminated. And as you can see here in this um, example, candidate B has the most with 39% of the uh, first round votes and candidate D has the least with 12%. Um, so as a result, candidate D will be dropped during the second round counts, as you can see here. Um, and what happens is we'll move on to uh, choice two, and we'll count up all of those second choice votes. And those votes will be um, interspersed for candidates A, B, and C, um, depending on you know which one of those candidates were picked for uh, round two by voters. And as you can see here, Candidate C has the least at 22, and candidate B will have the most at, I'm sorry, candidate C has the most at 24, apologies. Candidate B has the uh, most at 45, so candidate C will get dropped during the, after the second round votes are counted. Um, as a result of that, we'll move on to choice number three, where we'll count all of the votes of the two remaining candidates who are left. And in that, in that system, or in this system, folks who 
had their candidate C or D eliminated, if they made choices for the third, the fourth, or the fifth, those will still get counted, um, depending on how many um, candidates are in the race. So in this race, there's about four candidates. So whoever picked candidate D in the first round, if they pick candidate C in the second round, B in the third round, and A in the fourth round, those candidates will still get counted. So remember, you don't have four votes in this system or in this, in this um, example, you just have the one active vote because as we're counting in rounds, people are being eliminated, which only leaves one person to win the election. And remember the process will continue until there are two candidates left and the candidate with the most amount of votes wins. So in this example, you'll see candidate B has 58% to candidate A is 42%. So candidate B will win. Um, just remember that when this happens, um, a candidate doesn't have to get more than 50% in this exam in, in this situation. They just have to get the most um, to be declared the winner. Now, the main takeaway here is that you can rank up to five candidates, but you don't need to rank a total of five. If you rank five, five votes don't get counted, like I said earlier. You just have the one active vote because people are still being eliminated. During the um, during the count or the tabulations, uh, if you just prefer, you can just vote for your first choice candidate. Um, that's perfectly fine, um, as we saw in the last election. Folks did that, um, but just remember, if you rank other candidates, that doesn't harm your first choice. Uh, and when you rank multiple candidates, you can you still have that impact on who gets elected, even if your top choice doesn't win the election. Um, one last thing, um, ranking multiple candidates ensures that the vote will go towards your second, third, fourth, or fifth choice. So even if your top choice um, gets eliminated, when you rank the other candidates, you have more say in who wins an election. Now, as to when results will um, be announced, um, as we saw last year, the winner of a lot of different races were not known on election night. Um, this might be the same case again this year. Um, so in half of RCV elections, a winner was declared in the first round. Um, however, that means that in the other half of election, uh, in the other half of RCV elections, a winner could not be known for another week or so. Now, next steps. Um, right now, our agency is um, involved in education and outreach rollout, which we're currently doing right now. So. Voters should expect to see ranked choice voting. Really, they, they were, um, the folks in District 24 already saw it on uh, February 2nd. Um, folks in District 31 should see it next week, Tuesday. In the Bronx, you guys should start seeing this on March 23rd. And barring any other um, city official, city elected official leaving office, um, the next election after the 23rd of March should be the uh, primary election in June. Um, so next week will be District 31. And of course, Bronx District 11 and 15 are coming up on March 23rd. Early voting for that election starts March 13th, ends on the 21st. And June 22nd, that's when everyone will be voting for all positions. Um, within city government. In addition to that, other resources for ranked choice voting um, can be found on our website. Um, I will copy this information and place it in our, um, in the Zoom chat box here. Um, but you can definitely visit our website to learn more about ranked choice voting or any questions you may have about ranked choice voting. And you can also contact us directly as well on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. In addition to that, you can also go on the Board of Elections website. Um, they have general information about any elections that are coming up, who should be on the ballot, um, where your poll site is located, and other more granular information about special elections. And in addition to that, you can contact me via email at mpit at nyccfb.info, or you can contact our new Director of Partnerships and Outreach, Omar Suarez, at osuarez at nyccfb.info. Any questions? 
that was great, Matthew. Thank you. That was really helpful. And I got a deep, a deeper understanding of RCV. Um, if anyone has any questions, any questions, um, maybe we could just use the raise hand feature and go about it that way. Doyle seems like he raised his hand, but he could just speak, I feel like. I could, but I, when you lay out the rules, I want to try to follow them as best I can. <laughs> uh, Matthew, thank you for that. That was enormously helpful. So from what you said, it sounds like we're not in many cases uh, possible in many cases. We're not going to know an election winner exactly on election night. How long do you guys envision that um, that it's going to take the Board of Elections to kind of cycle through the, like those elections after the fact? Um, so after, I think I believe a week, seven days after an election mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to, I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember state law from the top of my head. Uh, seven days after an election, the Board of Elections is supposed to receive all absentee and military ballots um, in the mm -hmm. mail. It's supposed to be directed towards them. Uh, and from there, they'll have to count all valid ballots from gotcha. that point forward. Um, and generally, that could take two or three weeks from that point. So you already have one week where from in-person voting, seven days later, they receive mm -hmm. all the ballots. After that, okay. they count all of them. So that could take another two to three weeks on top of that one week that you already have to wait, that mm -hmm. they already have to wait for all the ballots to come in. So mm -hmm. it, could, it could be a while before you know, we get that cut before we um, get final results. Um, it's yeah. always been like this. Um, the only difference was last year, a lot of people voted absentee. So as a result, um, it sort of just opened up this whole other side of um, the election process to a bunch of people who just didn't really know that. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's something that, that could potentially happen. Great. And then um, well, I, I think you phrased it right. You're going to help us kind of avoid these runoff elections where not as many people vote. And it's very expensive, both in terms of the cost of uh, administering the elections and in cost of the TV ads that run thereafter. So that might be helpful for some folks. Um, yeah. my, my other question is, uh, I've been hearing a lot about bullet voting. And for those on the call who don't know what bullet voting is, it's basically like, for example, if I wanted to vote for Louisa, because I like Louisa so very much, and I instead of voting one through five and putting her as one of my one to five choices, I would just put her name on every choice. And how does that affect the voting process? Um, so we tell people don't do that because mm -hmm. let's say Louisa gets eliminated in round one. Well, you both voted for her five times. So if you got eliminated in round one, your ballot is now exhausted. As a result, you've, you know, you've exhausted the ballot. So yeah. we can't, so your vote pretty much just goes up in smoke. Um, so we tell folks, gotcha. don't run that risk and don't do that. Fair enough. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. So Matthew, essentially in that situation, it's like you only voted for one person and that's it because it only gets counted in that first round. Right. Got it. Um, we do have Bruce on the line who would also like to ask a question. Yeah, I thank you for your presentation. Uh, one of the things I foresee though is confusion. I think some voters will get confused. So I think the city is gonna have to really have a good education program for this thing to help voters out. Yeah, so um, one thing that the Board of Elections is um, also trying to do is, and we're currently working with their, their um, agency now, is they're working to have their poll site um, employees or their workers also learn the basics of ranked choice voting. So if someone has a question at the ballot, uh, at, when they're at the poll site, um, they can always um, speak to a poll, site a poll site worker, and that person should be able to assist them. 
That's great. And just a reminder, this presentation, especially for those who um, might have just joined, um, this will be posted, I believe, on our Facebook and social media. So Matthew's great presentation that he gave can live on and people can, yes, John confirmed it, it could live on and friends of ours who are unsure about the process could simply go to this video and watch and hear the great questions that were asked and get their um, answers to it. So that will be really good to help. It might not alleviate all the issues of people not knowing, but at least we could do our part in um, getting the information out there. Any other questions? And thank you, Bruce. That was a good, good comment. Anyone else? Uh, Matt, just, just real quick. I, I just had a question. Um, for example, what if you vote for a candidate who's eliminated in one round, will your second third, fourth, fifth choices carry over in subsequent rounds of counting? And how is that process kind of put together? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, like if let's say I voted for you first and you happen to be eliminated as a candidate, but I voted Louisa second and Louisa wasn't eliminated in a round. Would, I, like I'm asking if like, would your vote then be carried over to further rounds if yes. your, your choices get eliminated. Yes. Okay. So what will happen is when we do the first round, um, if I had the least amount, I'll be eliminated. However, in the second round, if Louisa had the most, she would still stay on. So we'll count Louisa to, I guess, your number two when we're counting this. Sorry, let me, it sounded kind of weird. Let me count that. Let me do it again. So, Let's say you vote for me and I get eliminated in the, in the first round. We'll go to your second round. We go to the second round. And if Louisa is your number two, she will get your number. She will get your vote for that round. Um, assuming she is not the she's not um, she has the least amount of votes. She will move on to the third round where she'll also receive the third round votes of the folks who picked her in the third round and so on and so forth until a winner is determined. Okay. Thank you. And now I just thought of, uh, you know, this question came to me during the presentation. I forgot about it, but now um, with this conversation, Matthew, did I hear you correctly when you said, um, so let's say we get to the fifth round and the, so you said, did you say at the fifth round, it wouldn't necessarily, if it's whoever has the most at that point wins? Regardless yeah, if they meet 50%, but I would think in theory, every, someone must like reach 50%, right? At that in, point? In theory, you should definitely reach 50 plus one or more. Right. Um, however, there's always going to be a situation where that won't happen. And in that case, we'll just have to go with the person who has the most. So if the person who has the most has 48 and the, the other person who, you know, the second person had, I don't know, uh, 47, 46. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we'll have to go with 48. Okay, got it, got it. I just wanted to make sure I heard that correctly. Mm -hmm. Anyone else, any questions before we conclude? Yeah, hey, Louisa, this is Beverly. So um, uh, that was a great presentation. I really appreciated that. Um, uh, back when I was a baby lawyer, I worked for an organization that was at the time called the Center for Voting and Democracy, um, and I think they're called Fair Vote now. And they used to have toolkits um, for um, sort of uh, community education about ranked choice voting. And I'm wondering if we might not consider, um, and this is sort of more a question for, for John and Louisa, adding to one of our community meetings, um, uh, maybe like a little mock 
vote so that people can kind of use ranked choice voting in a low stakes environment, you know, where, where you know, we vote about something fictional and just sort of get people used to the process um, and share with them um, a little bit about how it goes and so we can, you know, walk them through a little bit um, so that we can at least, um, you know, maybe provide some additional education to our members. I don't know if the city has toolkits on that as well, but. Um, I've seen, no, that definitely makes sense. I've seen um, presentations where folks will have like, uh, I think 10 parks and you just have to choose five of your favorites throughout the city. And then those I love get, that um, idea. Hmm? I love that idea. Yeah, and then they get, they get ranked. And then we determine, you know, who more or less is the, who, I guess, which park is the, um, the most favorite park in New York City. Uh, I've seen examples like that um, happening. Um, I'm not sure if our agency um, has something like that, but I will definitely go back and let them know. This, that, that, really, that definitely does sound like a good idea for us to have, at the very least. Yeah, that's, it, you know, I actually, Matthew, I think I saw the same polling example. And I think we would be, as a, us um, Bronx res residents, would be happy how that poll turns out. But it, it does give a better understanding, seeing it move and everything to s understand how RCV votes. That's a great idea. And um, Beverly, I mean, I can't speak for other board members, um, but I think that's a great idea for us to try out at a general meeting just so people can you know understand it and visual the see the visualization of it any questions oh doyle gives that a thumbs up so that's great last call all right well I just want to thank you again, Matthew. That was such a great presentation. It was very educational um, for someone like me who I felt like I've read a lot of stuff on it, seeing your presentation and hearing you speak about it. I feel uh, uh, like a loads off my back now. I feel like I have a better understanding. So thank you for coming and making time out of your day to inform us about ranked choice voting. Thank you, Lisa, and thank you everyone for having me today. Thank you, and again, everyone, like John confirmed earlier, this will be on our social media platforms. So feel free to go back and look at it and share it with your friends because this is an issue that everyone should know about going into the 2021 election cycle. So thank you, and I hope you all have a great evening. <laughs>